and uh, on the road, and the guys from uh, actually Cody from Hinder recorded that one for us on the road. Really? Yeah, it was really cool. They they're um, they're really good guys. Um, we uh, we were I think we were like in a, a Walmart parking lot, and they just um, we we kind of came up with the idea, and we wanted to get a demo of it. And, and Hinder had like a little studio on their bus, and 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 let us uh, record the idea, and it ended up being on the record. So that was pretty cool. Well, that was really nice. Yeah, they're really good guys. They, they've helped us a lot. They taught us a lot about uh, etiquette and, you know, being on the road and being nice to other bands. And we, we, we learned a lot from those guys. I'd love to see that book, Etiquette Lessons from Hinder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of being on the road, um, it's time to get down and dirty. So. Well, I had a few more questions. Oh, you have some good get... questions? I just got a couple more oh, questions Laura, for you. Oh, nice questions. Okay, um, so... You were nominated in 2011 for a Juno Award, and that is um, Canada's Grammy Awards. Yeah. Um, for a new group of the year. Um, now, could you tell me, because it doesn't look like uh, you guys won that award, which it should have went to you, but could you tell me who it did go to? It went to uh, an indie band in, in Canada called um, Said the Whale. Um, we had never really heard of them up until uh, their nomination, but you know, I, I think um, the whole uh, Juno Society kind of, um, or sorry, association, uh, saw it as we kind of took flight already, and uh, you know, giving us the, the Juno Award wouldn't have done as much for us as it would have been for another band um, that hasn't had uh, as much success as we had up until that point. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and, and they're a really good band, and, and uh, they ended up winning, and they deserve it. They're a really good band. Well, I'll have to check them out. I, I think I've heard the name Sid the Well, but I don't believe I've ever checked out any, I don't any think of their I've music. Anything either. I'm wondering if I would, how upset I would be that they won over you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd see that for sure. <laughs> they sound like they're like one of those college bands that are all about thoughts and feelings. and. <laughs> yeah, very excited. much, very much. <laughs> okay, um... I got one more question for you, and then I have a fan question. How did how how did um, the band become named My Darkest Days? Um, I guess everyone just felt uh, that you know, and I think a lot of artists can relate that sometimes you just come up with the best stuff on your darkest days, and uh, it just kind of went from there. And it was just like, it's a good band name, My Darkest Days. Why not? Okay, and if you could just clear up a, a possible rumor for me. Now, I know you have no brothers, but I had read somewhere that your brother was in um, Three Days Three Grace. Days Grace. Now, that, is that yeah. really a brother or like a, a, a friend that you call a brother? And I do believe you also help um, write some of their music. Is that is that correct? That's actually Matt's brother. Um, okay. Is- Brad Walsh, the bass player for Three Days Grace. Oh, so it's the singer's brother. Yeah, it's Matt's brother, yeah. Oh. And uh, they helped us out a lot uh, in our early career, get, showing us the ropes. Oh, well, that's great. Okay, well, because I knew you didn't have a brother, but I read that read that somewhere, and it didn't make a lot of sense. So thank you for clearing that up. Oh, no, um, thank you. And I have a fan question, and actually, this fan is my younger sister. Her name is Holly, and she actually introduced me um, to my darkest days through the porn star dancing. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I have introduced that song to so many people and I hit replay constantly that, um, my best friend, um, as soon as they hit replay, they roll their eyes. It's not that, <laughs> <laughs> not that she doesn't like your song, but when, you know, you're on the 50th time of repeat, as soon as I hit repeat, I look at her and the eyes roll. <laughs> and she said, <laughs> there's so many people that have introduced the song to um, since it had came up, since um, my sister introduced me to your band, that um, they really enjoy it. And <laughs> it they get great. tired of me hitting replay. <laughs> but that's uh, And every time they hear that song, they think of me. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up because I think it's rather amusing. Well, but, thank you. That's really cool to know. <laughs> but my sister wants to know, um, what made you decide to wear eyeliner, and what at age did you start wearing under uh, 
underwear. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. We don't know for sure he does. Oh, yeah. I like I don't, it. but yeah, go on. <laughs> you don't. Fantastic. That well, is that's wonderful. part of the uncensored part. Well, Check. We're done with that part. Yeah. Now we got two things in common. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was joking on Saturday. We had our big third anniversary party for the radio station. And I said, uh, hey, to pay for the bands tonight, maybe we should auction off. Oh, Nick says, maybe we should auction off Laura's underwear. I said, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> Nikki comes over to me and she goes, well, we want to auction you off. And I'm like, what do you mean auction me off? And she goes, well, like auction off your underwear. And I'm like, I don't wear any. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, yeah, neither do I. She has some of the comments. So, so she was a little butt hurt. So needless to say, they didn't auction me off. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> we That's just had funny. to pay for the bands. Dang it. Yeah. And you know the band Pasty Jenny, correct? They've opened up for you a few times. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know those guys really yeah, well. That's who was here Saturday. That's yep, who they, came up here and played our anniversary party. We, Yeah, we had a... I know Pasty Jenny um, got them signed up at Thunder Mountain Rock Fest last year and um, got them signed up to come and play our anniversary bash. And I know they've opened up for you several times and they are going to open up for you again on June 9th in Kearney, Nebraska. That's right. Do yeah. you and do you have any funny stories? You know that you shared with one of the guys from Pasty Jenny that you might wanna. <laughs> the Pasty Jenny guys uh, are hilarious. They're, they're honestly, uh, we, we like playing with them. They're 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 just really funny. Like they're just a really funny group of guys. Like from, really from the band to their entire crew, they're mm-hmm. all characters. Like every time we play, I play with them or we do shows with them, we're like. Like, somebody's got to document their band because they're just funny people. Like, they're, they're really, really funny people. I know. I had a, an interview with them just a couple, a couple weeks yeah. ago, and it was one of the funniest interviews I think I've had so far. But um, well, Greg, Greg yeah. had um, wanted me to ask you how, how you like Pasty Jenny, and he had figured that you would say something like that. He thinks um, the world of your band as well, and... Um, it was really nice. I got to actually sing uh, Prima Donna with, <laughs> with uh, the band on stage, which I've never done karaoke in my life because I'm scared. But I jumped right on stage and just went with it. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Um, okay, let's now we're going to move into the little bit of uncensored part. Um, if I would walk invited onto your tour bus from the beginning all the way to the end of the tour bus, what would I find? What would I see? Uh, probably a bunch of used condoms everywhere from all the other guys. Um, <laughs> oh, all the, all other, the guys. other guys. He right. has to specify. Yeah. <laughs> and, all the other guys. Uh, Jägermeister, Monster, uh, and beer just everywhere. Definitely. That, that, that's for sure. That's what's here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me, like, the weirdest or coolest present given to you by a fan? Uh, oh, um, the other day I had a guy who works for General Mills, which makes Wheaties. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, he got corporate office to make, uh, put me on the Wheaties, like, the front of a Wheaties box, and there was just, like, a w- one-time made thing. Sure, yeah. When is that coming out? No, it was, it was just, just, like, for it was him. just he made, got it made as a gift. Oh, it was just, cool. like, and, it, and, and put it in this, like, glass box and gave it to me. It was really cool. They should actually put that on the shelves. Yeah, it'd be cool. That yeah. would be wonder. I'd buy Wheaties. <laughs> I'd actually yeah, eat and the he, he said, he was like, you know, he's like, it's the first time. He's like, he's like everybody wants to be on a box of Wheaties. So mm-hmm. here you go. Like, cool. And, and so before, you know, I know we want to get to this uncensored part. So, so bad, but... I want to just bring up one more thing. Now, you are starting a show of some sort called Road Eat. Yeah. And would you like to kind of explain what that show is going to be about and how long it possibly will run and how we can tune in to, to um, check it out? Check it out. Well, we're actually developing it right now. Um, and um, it will, it, it, like, it will shopping with networks right now to find out uh you know who's gonna actually uh gonna be the network for the show mm-hmm. but it, it's really a show about discovering um cool places to eat while being on tour and oh, cool. um you know i'm a huge foodie and i yes, i like to are. discover and find new places to eat all the time so um i decided to put a show together 
And, uh, yeah, and we just started developing it, and it's called Road Eats, and uh, I'm excited to get it going. We, we've filmed uh, one pilot so far for the show, and we got a lot of interest in it, and we're just uh, working at, um, yeah, pretty much putting the whole thing together now. So hopefully by next year, uh, we'll be able to, uh, well, you'll be seeing it on air, hopefully. So there's going to be, like, a camera crew following you around as you... Yeah, Is yeah, tour absolutely. Stuff? Okay. Well, that'll be interesting because I definitely know you love food. Yes, big time. It's like one of my favorite things ever, for I sure. I think that's one of the most things you think about is food. Oh, absolutely. It definitely is. That's for sure. I mean, how do you stay so thin, in shape, um, in a great body just... with Starbucks and, and food, constant <laughs> food? <laughs> It's it's like it's not uh, how much you eat. It's really it's like what you eat. I think. Yeah, sure. So if you if you eat healthy and you stay healthy and, and you work out and like they see say it's good to eat like six meals a day, uh, mm-hmm. it's like you know, but healthy right. meals. So I, I that's kind of more of what I stand by. So I eat a lot, but usually pretty healthy to keep that metabolism up. Absolutely. Yeah, because I see a lot of pictures of your food and it doesn't look like you indulge yourself in a lot of junk food and you know it seems rather healthy what you yeah. you know what you seem to eat absolutely yeah that's kind of how i roll for sure so you don't know exactly your um trying to find out your date that you're gonna release this the show is it gonna are you gonna post um your stuff on facebook or are you gonna have a fan yeah page? we'll post it we'll post it um when we know uh like i said like we're still kind of um shopping and, and working with a few networks to figure out who's going to actually put it out and release it and all that kind of stuff. So we're still working through it right now. Well, that sounds... Oh, that's like a dream right of mine. Your, right up your oh, alley. My dream is at, I can die as soon as I become a host on Food Network or Cooking <laughs> Channel or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then Same I'll here, die happy. So. Yeah, have you ever seen that show, Bitch in Kitchen? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, yeah. That is the kind of show I'd love to do. She's like rocking, and it's all about food and rock. And, ah, oh, so excited. I love that. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you'll definitely have to uh, keep in touch and let us know because that'd be really up our alley to see mm-hmm. see what you got oh, def- going on. I definitely, 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 definitely will. Okay, um, you didn't quite answer the question about um, why you decided to wear eyeliner and oh, when yeah. you started. <laughs> eyeliner. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, honestly, it was just, uh, I'm just, uh, like I said, like, it, I guess it's the same thing with, with my hair, right? It's just, I am a loud person, and um, it was just, uh, just another way to really, like, express myself. That's really all it was. See, I have a huge fetish with men that wear eyeliner so oh cool <laughs> yes i love it i very very cool i can't get enough of men with eyeliner i think they should all wear it <laughs> <laughs> okay um now every every band has you know what they typically call a blower and and who in your band would you consider to be the blower definitely read <laughs> that's, bad. that's what definitely read Reed, yeah, and and can you tell me a little? What does Reed do? You know, give anything, me anything, anything like. Oh, nasty! I've seen Reed literally uh, drink a glass of Max Barf. Um, <gasps> no, on camera. Did he keep it um, down? Sorry. Did he keep it down? Oh yeah. Or did drink he... and swallow the whole thing. Oh it my god! I'm gonna barf just thinking about that. Yeah, it was horrible. It was like it was pretty epic, though. Now I also remember seeing an inter- interview with um, I know it was Matt and you. I'm not quite sure who. I think it might have just been you two, but you were discussing um, a situation that happened with Hinder and Sushi. Would you care to? Do you know which story I'm speaking of? It, uh, Hinder and Sushi? Sushi. Yeah, I, I, I read, uh, I think Blower threw up, or, uh, or threw up, um, a bunch of sushi onto the ground and Reed picked it up and then literally, <gasps> oh. 
Oh. Ate it. No. And now, did he throw it back up? Uh, yeah. And then ate it again. <laughs> So it was like th- it, that sushi oh. went around three times. Yeah, three times. Oh my gosh! Now it is was, he? It was pretty awful. Is it that at that point then, when you guys just know he's going to do these ridiculous things, so you will just dare him to do it just because you know he's going to do it? Absolutely, yeah. Now, oh. like he's, we know he's going to do it. So now we just we're like, all right, Reed, go ahead. Oh, and yuck. I also know another story about you, Sal, and I believe it was also with your Hinder um, tour as well, but they lit a body part of yours on fire. What? No, you know what I'm speaking of, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Laura lighting his balls on fire. Oh! Yeah, and didn't somebody... Oh, Reed, Reed, we lit Reed's ass on fire once, actually, yeah. too. Oh, no, my I God. thought... I, do you do any of that kind of stuff? I mean, do you light your asshole on fire or? No, that's too precious to me. I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll light somebody else's on fire, but not my own. Now, have they tried this? And I've seen this done by somebody too. Lighting bottle rockets out of their ass. No, I haven't seen that. No. Okay, well, that's the next thing you can work on. See, with, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there was a band called Sons of Poseidon. And the uh, the bass player mm-hmm. Hat used to jump up on the bar and light bottle rockets out of his butt. Crazy. So yeah. maybe you know that might be a good uh, thing you can bring up to read and the see, big see where that goes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> can you tell me a little bit other kind of stories? I mean, do you have any like crazy groupie stories? Do you have some psycho stalkers that stalk you or the band? Uh, no, we have, like, dedicated fans. We don't have really any stalkers. Um, everyone who we see a lot, I mean, we consider them friends, so they're not creepy. Um, we just have, like, we just have so many road stories just from touring so much, you know? Yeah. Like, something crazy happens every night, and it's just... There's, 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 oh. You're... Sorry, we're just checking to a hotel here. Yeah, okay. I can tell you're, you're traveling somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot of wind wind noise behind you. It's... Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, it just it, something happens every night, and it just gone to the point where it just doesn't even phase anybody anymore. You better be keeping track of this, though. You got to write that down. You got to write it down so yeah. someday you can look back on it and yeah, say, can "Oh, you... I remember that." Can you tell us some of your other road stories or tour stories? Just a couple more. Um, you, you know what? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass you on to, to Reed because Reed's got some really really good ones. Oh God, I don't know if I can even talk to Reed now. <laughs> you guys want to know some road stories? Uh, I don't know yes. Reed because we've heard a lot of <laughs> stuff about you, and I'm not even quite sure if we of want to. Of course we do. Of course oh, we do, uh, Reed. You're gonna make you me just, vomit. I just you know just it. Open up oh, to no, me and no, no. tell me all PG. sorts of goodies. I'll keep it PG. I, no, you don't have I to have keep it PG. Stories, you don't have to keep it PG. We are uncensored and not FCC regulated. So you just you just bust loose, baby. Don't be shy. All right. Well, um, the first thing that comes to mind in terms of road stories, I guess, um, a little more recent. The first show back, actually, we've done about four since we started the tour. And on the first one, um, Sal tried to take it a little over the edge, a little more over the top than we usually do or have in the past. Um, we always have we invite all the girls in the crowd to come on stage for the uh, encore of our set, Porn Star Dancing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was always just kind of like the typical thing we did for headlining was bring everybody, like all the girls, no discrimination, everybody to get on the stage or whatever. And, uh, and this time around, we actually had them all take their tops off first. Of course, yeah. So um, Bra we were thinking about it at the time after a couple beers or whatever, but in doing so and having these 30 or 40 women topless on our stage with us, we committed a federal offense. Yeah, sure. Public indecency. You're going to sure. go to jail. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, that's highly illegal. And uh, that was a pretty rock and roll experience. The first show back, we were able to break a federal law. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> and I take it nobody got arrested? No, not yet. There Luckily, was too many. We're waiting for the lawyers at the moment. <laughs> but I think everything's all good. <laughs> so maybe, maybe just keep it to uh, take your shirt off but leave your bra on. 
Yeah, but then you lose the whole the oh, effect. You know. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Je should have said quoi about the whole experience, <laughs> right? Uh, yes. I feel like that was uh, a <laughs> good time. Oh, okay, yeah. now but you back in back in our height of drinking on the Hinder tour about during the late 2010, early 2011, we were all taking everything a little too far and. I have a. I did. I did a lot of things back then that maybe were probably a bad idea. <laughs> now you uh, like to vomit. You like to eat vomit. Doesn't that make no, you gay? No, that, that is a massive misconception. I don't like to eat vomit. But you do. Um, I have repeatedly. I don't, like, it's not like a regular <laughs> thing by any means. But can I have a know, cup of puke for breakfast, some please? Some sort of shock value to other people, and things don't oh. usually shock me or. Uh, I, I maybe have a higher threshold for what I can do versus what other people do or what and other people see as disgusting. What, <laughs> what in, you know, what goes through your mind that you like to have your balls and asshole lit on fire? Um, is that like again, an S&M thing to push for you? Other people's, uh, <laughs> other people's threshold for disgust or obscenity is, is it really what... At the time I was getting off of, I've, I feel like I've matured a little bit. I'm going to be 24 <laughs> in August. So I'm trying to keep the uh, the asshole lighting fires to a minimum on this tour. <laughs> but the tour is very young, so we'll see how that actually leads. But um, Is it like an S&M thing for you? Do you get into S&M? Is, is that kind of what it is? I mean, how long does so. you... Very much so. Pain for pleasure. Very much okay. so. <laughs> so, like, you like the dominatrix and uh, the whole... Oh, I like it all, baby. I like it all. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! But, uh, <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, you know, I just I wanted to uh, to see how far I could take that, and and at the time it was a uh, again what's often mis uh, misinterpreted or been misconstrued in this whole situation, or the uh -huh. myth of, of my butthole being lit on fire was that at the time we were touring with Hinder, and I felt a lot of responsibility as uh, sort of a wilder one of our bunch to try and compete with B Hinder's Blower. Who oh, is I a, know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As a modern-day pirate. <laughs> yes, he is. And God bless his soul. He is, uh, he is a crazy, crazy man. And I tried to, um, to try and, you know, knock on that door a little bit at the time because I was young and impressionable and trying to, uh, trying to lead, lead a, live a good example for the rest of our team. And, and I think that's what really pushed me to do a lot of that stuff back then was to try and... Um, keep up with blower i know there was a time i think uh they made a bunch of really nasty sushi for him and he threw it up yeah and um they were doing some video blogs so i i ate it um uh, and then you threw I it up and ate, ate it, it again sushi, right man <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yes i did um and that was it made for a good video blog but i mean what can you say so are you happy uh, but, you're not touring with hinder anymore <laughs> uh, at the moment yeah i'm, I'm pretty uh relieved um that <laughs> In a good way, you know, not that, not that we don't love them, and I want to tour with them a billion more times, but, you know, so it's probably best for my health and the <laughs> psychological well-being of those around me that it's probably over for a little while. Okay, <laughs> I... I Nick, Nickelback Tour is going to be more about the show, and us and just trying to keep ourselves together and keep ourselves in line. Yeah, I can't so imagine can... seeing Nick, Nickelback have a blower. Like, <laughs> no. Although I think uh, I have heard stories about Chad paying money to do disgusting things. So I mean, really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like money, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think for uh, for the most part, I just want to try and keep my composure because I, I have taken a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. in terms of vocals than I ever have in the past. I'm singing backups for a lot more songs in this tour. So. Okay. I got a question for you, Reed. Um. Uh -huh. Okay, you let your ass hole on fire. How long yeah. did you sustain burns? How did that? Uh, no, 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 not at all. It was it was merely just like a flash in the pan sort of thing. Would you fart but and it, light it? it, it or quite did... terrible. <laughs> Pardon? Were did you, you lighting? Farts? Did you fart and light it, or did no, you? No, no, no. It was it was just a whole bunch of hairspray and some hair, and then. <laughs> So you didn't sustain, oh, like, okay. horrible burns? Because I couldn't imagine Oh, no, being... no, I, I did not sustain any burns whatsoever. Okay. Very, um, very minimal. Because I'm thinking, how can you be up on stage, sweat dripping down your burnt asshole crack, <laughs> and you still being able to enjoy what you're doing? Pain for pleasure, baby. <laughs> well, I guess if you like the S&M thing, I suppose that, you know, that's, that's definitely up your, your right. alley. Yeah. <laughs> up no, your no, alley. I, I didn't feel any, there was no pain, actually, in that specific, uh, 
in that specific Instance. situation, there yeah. was very little amount of pain. And so what I other- went and took a hot tub bath after that. It was a hot tub in the green room that I lit my bubble on fire. <laughs> Quite nice, actually. Um, so, anything so else you dinners. do? I mean, <laughs> this is rather interesting. Um, yeah, well, it, it fascinates me what what um, what offends people and what it just like emotional response or uh, you know uncontrolled responses that people will get from certain mm-hmm. things that you do. Um, for example. Like, lighting your asshole on fire is obviously going to shock and offend most people because that is considered <laughs> beyond the norm. Sure. So you take any other situation in that regard that other people are offended by or taken aback by, and I just try and take those things and see how far I can take my threshold. To, I don't know if it's just a hobby of mine or what, but... <laughs> well, it's definitely interesting. I now. find it fascinating to see the, the responses from people. Like yeah. a psychological experiment, if you will. Oh, so you're trying to make this all educational now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't, think I don't so know, maybe I'm just justifying it. Yeah, whatever. I think you're just trying to justify it. You're making it educational. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. But yeah, we've we've been uh touring for so long that the um what you think is gonna offend you or you, something you think back in the day, you know, we used to be blown away by a certain situation or like taken aback by like let's say I don't know playing in front of like 20,000 people five years ago used to seem like a never gonna happen distance mm-hmm. thing and now we've done that like multiple times and it just the more you experience and the more you the further you take things in life the further you want to take them you know I can't wait to see you guys in Fargo it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be good times we will give you uh I have to say, North 110% Dak- of our show, that's for sure. North Dakota's uh, threshold for shock is surprisingly low. So, you know, <laughs> just keep that in mind. <laughs> so it'll just be another day in the, day in the life for me then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you do any type of S&M on stage, or do you just leave that for the tour bus? Well, we haven't yet. Yep. Um, although, <laughs> I did get a blowjob on stage once. <gasps> did you really? You didn't. Yeah, yeah, it was very brief. Speaking no of one was aroused, public but... indecency. So you were actually... Oh, no, I was hiding by the drum set. So oh. I don't think some, most of the crowd okay. saw that. Oh, a few my... people who did, I'm sorry for, but, you know, oh, it's the nature of the beast, right? Oh, <laughs> well, that's all. Oh, my word. Well, that's very... Uh... The one thing that does make me a little bit upset is... Uh, we don't you didn't get to finish? cater our <laughs> show to, like, we, we play the same show every night. Yeah. And when it is all ages, we try and keep it slightly less depraved than uh, a 21 up show. But being said, if you go to a rock show, you know, if you go to the circus, be prepared to see a little bit of animal cruelty. That's <laughs> the nature of the circus. If you come to a rock show, you're going to see a whole bunch of people who've been living on tour for a long time. And it goes without saying that, you know, Assholes will be lit on fire, <laughs> <laughs> and blowjobs will be you know given. I mean? So it, it does. Uh, it does make me. I don't know how I feel sometimes about playing these all ages shows in front of people. But, <laughs> but then again, you know, don't bring your kids to the circus if you don't want them to see elephants getting ridden around by clowns. That's very true, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> oh, that's very true. Oh, good lord. You got any any other thing that might top some of the stories you already told us? Oh, I'm sure I do. But um, I smoke a whole lot of pot, so sometimes... <laughs> you forget? I forget. <laughs> Which is probably for the best anyway. It helps me sleep for multiple uh... reasons, obviously. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I um, found out my girlfriend was a hooker. Um, <laughs> well, the girl that I dated for several months turned out to be an escort. I should say. And, um, well, but but you know, had to feel happy. To, you how did you find free, that you know? out? Did she tell oh, you? It was, did it was you... actually pretty sad. Uh, she wasn't like a serious relationship or whatever, but we dated for several months on and off while I was on tour in 2011. And uh, I just kind of like checked my email one day and sh- or sh- checked, went to check my email. Hers was still signed in. So I didn't want to like pull like a weird girlfriend move where I went through it, but it literally had some other girl's name on it. So struck my curiosity and sure enough there's a bunch of emails from dudes trying to hook up with her so I, it was a rough situation but it definitely made me and that's that much more callous in terms of uh, relationships and trust yeah I mean you're sticking yeah. it to someone so who's been sleeping with hundred, 
hundred men. But is it really that much different? At least she's getting some money. I bet you've hooked up <laughs> with girls who've slept with hundreds of men for free. Yeah, no, absolutely. She's a wonderful girl. I, I don't mean to take <laughs> away from her as a person. She's just... I'm sure others would say the same thing. <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, she does what she does. I do what I do. We've all got our faults. We've all got our vices. So you broke up with her? Be... <laughs> yeah. I and, would, you know, too. I wrote a song called Dating a Hooker, so, it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll sell it to a country band one day or something. <laughs> oh, a country band? A country Good band. Lord. <laughs> oh, nice. But, um, yeah, I guess we're about to do some acoustic performance here in a couple minutes, so I should okay. probably uh, go find the rest of the boys. Well, okay, thanks can, for being on. You guys have been for, awesome. Yeah, thanks for uh, jumping on the line. Is there a way I can ta- talk back to Sal? Can we tell Sal Shh. bye? Or right, you know off? what? He's actually in the shower now. I think we're about to go and do this acoustic performance in like four minutes. Well, I need I needed to ask him. Well, maybe we can ask you. Okay. Um, you're going to be in Fargo, North Dakota, and we live in Bismarck, which is, it's a yep. little over 400 mile trip. Yeah, you guys way. were just here, weren't you? Like in, uh, was it October? Yeah, I believe so. It was October. Now, is it, and I know Battle, so he had put me on the guest list for Hinder before. I was wondering if you could possibly, um, we want to, we want to hook up, pull some Reed strings yeah. want. for totally. me and Stacy that we could be VIP and then come backstage for a meet and greet would you be able to hook us chickies up no problem anything you guys need anything so anything you need honey so we no i mean we do (laughs) i'm an old i could i could have birthed you reed but oh my still. God! You're not that old. I'm sure you would regret it if you had. <laughs> so you promise that we get VIP and meet and greet? Cross my heart, hope to that. Oh, I yeah. will bring salt, so, coffee, and you, my thrown up sushi, and I a promise. lighter, and a lighter, Some and a candy. lighter. Wonderful. So Wonderful. you can just go ahead and put those under my name at the yep. box office, and then, yeah. um, how are we going to meet up after the show? How do I? Um, well, I'll, t- I'll get Battle to take care of all that. Once you have the okay. VIP passes and everything like that, it'll okay. be right. able to hang out where we're hanging out. So and we'll I know a, Battle, so he should. He knows who I am. Yep. Fantastic. No I so appreciate both of you guys coming on the show. What a wonderful interview. I absolutely love your band. And Thank you so I much. will get to meet you personally and drink some beer with you. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, May 20th, I believe you're in And do you know what? It's my Fargo. birthday on May 20th. Oh, right on. Yeah. So, that's so an you awesome can give present. her now birthday you, spankings. Not, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not now that I know that he's into S&M. <laughs> we'll do... There you go. Well, are, you know, okay, are you a, a, are you a sadist? Are you a sadist or a masochist? Um, I'm whatever, uh, whatever the situation calls for. Do you like receiving the pain more than giving? Uh, I prefer to give it, but I'll just give it, you know, you gotta, so you do... gotta give a little to get a little, right? <laughs> That's right. Maybe I'll bring my whip just for, I'll, I'll, well, I'll swat your I'm ass a couple of times. <laughs> well, thanks for being on with us today, Reed. My pleasure. And thank you so much for the opportunity. We are very thankful for your support. And you are anything welcome. Anything we can do for you guys is our pleasure. Well, thank you so much. And we will see you next um, month. And yeah. uh, we'll do a little partying and talking, and it'll be fantastic to meet you all. I really appreciate yeah. it. Well, right on. I look forward to seeing you all. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, being on, and good luck at your <laughs> the, show. The, I know we're cutting it down to like a minute. discussion. To... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I could speak longer. we got to figure this whole situation out here. That's all right, dear. Okay. Go play um, some rock and roll. Um, yeah, um, don't forget to put me on that list. I'll keep in touch with, um, I don't have you on my Facebook. Um, my okay. name is Laura Hargrove. If you could find me and add me, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll figure it out through Sal. I'm sure he ha- has your contact information. Yes. All right. Right on. Good luck, and I will see you guys next month. And, um, thank you again so much for your uncandid um, interview. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Bye bye. Take care. Ciao. And I would like to end the show again by thanking our sponsor. Big Willie's ATP. Stop by the and check out the state's selection of wild berry incense 